Hi everybody, this is Tracy from Natural Shore. And I'm Martina. This is Maya. We're at the office today and we're going to do another book review. This one's called Web Watching, A Guide to Webs and the Spiders That Make Them by Larry Weber. You might have remembered that we did Larry Weber's book, A Backyard Almanac. Um, and so this is another book for him and it's really great. Uh, a lot of times in our restorations, we will find these spiders and we will um, see all the really awesome webs that they make. So we got this book just to kind of learn more about the spiders we see on a regular basis. And it has a lot of great information about spiders. Um, and so we'll just kind of talk a little bit about that. What do you think of the book, Martina? I really liked it. I learned a ton that I didn't know, and I'm actually a huge fanatic of spiders. I have a tarantula at home, yeah. and I love to observe them. I love to see the webs in the wild, and just so much good information Right, that made me really appreciate them more. Yeah, this is actually some pictures we have that we've taken from our restorations. Uh, one of the really cool things that I learned was that most spiders don't actually make webs. Um, I thought kind of that was the majority of spiders made webs and that's how they caught their prey, their prey but actually most spiders don't. But all spiders have the spinnerets and the ability to make silk with their silk glands so I thought that was super impressive. And then like this book, like a lot of the books we review have really really awesome pictures and photos of um, the subject they talk about and they also have really interesting diagrams. I didn't realize that the um, spider silk glands that spiders have are so intricate and involved. Here's kind of one of the diagrams of it. There's so many parts um, to these spider silk glands that allow them to make so many different kinds of silk. So there's their webs are formed with all these different silk types um, some that allow them to, you know, capture the prey because they're sticky and then others that just kind of are stronger or more elastic and they're able to use these different types of silk to make their webs, which I thought was super mm -hmm. interesting. Yeah, depending on the species, there's five to seven different silk glands that they actually have and they all produce a specific kind of silk. And it's just amazing to me that they actually like know which silk gland to use at the time yeah the control they have over it and they usually pull it out with their legs and mm -hmm. kind of place it so precisely to make their webs another yeah. interesting thing i um, read in this book was that no matter how intricate these webs are like most of them it really only takes them a half an hour to an hour to make these webs which is crazy to me like and i learned that they also take the webs down each day eat the webs, and then make another one every single day. And that is just amazing to me that they, you know, not only that they do that, but I, you know, it doesn't take them that long, which is pretty amazing. So, um, and they're able to maneuver around their webs without actually getting caught on their own web, which I didn't even think about, yeah. you know, before I read this book, there, you know, a lot of, the outside rings um, are sticky to capture the prey and they're able to catch, you know, catch them but also then incapacitate their prey without getting stuck in their own trap, which seems pretty important. Um, and then Larry Weber goes through all the different types of webs that you might see on a regular basis. One type is, you know, the classic cobwebs. And I kind of want to talk about this long-bodied cellar spider. You've actually seen a couple of these, you know, in our office. You might have them in your house pretty regularly. Um, and these types of spiders make those cobwebs that are pretty irregular, but that's kind of how they um, catch their prey. They just make a massive of web to catch um, their prey. And there's different kinds of spiders that make these cobwebs in the book. Really beautiful pictures. He talks a lot about how you see these um, webs when there's dew out. And um, one of like 
a classic memory I have every time I go to the cabin I like to get my coffee in the morning and go down to the dock and there's always new webs there on the dock for me to look at with my coffee and that's just I got this book to just kind of identify those different webs and so I um, really wanted to discuss this book just to encourage people to appreciate spiders more go out and maybe into their restorations or even their lawns and try to identify these spiders. They're not something that's scary. Um, a lot of them are very harmless. We, you know, run into those yellow garden spiders quite a bit and they've never hurt us, never bitten us. They're huge spiders and they're very tranquil. They'll usually just drop off their webs if they feel threatened. So just wanted to kind of talk about that, how there's really not a whole lot to be afraid of when it comes to these spiders. Um, yeah. to and with the garden spider too, um, they actually create this stabilimentum. I'm not sure if you can see that. Right there. Yeah. Yep. Very good. Right here. But there's a couple of different theories why they actually create those stabilimentums. Um, one is for camouflage, just to kind of see how their pattern is a little zigzag, so maybe that could also <laughs> contribute to that. Um, UV light reflection, so the web can reflect light and um, prevent birds from flying into their webs, so kind of like a adaptation to that. Yeah, a lot of pollinators see in UV light, so yep. they attract pollinators into their web as prey by reflecting that UV light from, um, you know, it, with, with these patterns, it kind of mimics something that you might see on a flower. Yep. Um, so yeah, really awesome pictures of that in the book. We also have pictures of the banded garden spider. That's another one we see quite often. Um, you know, just really impressive that these, these spiders can make these intricate webs. Um, these are mostly found in what's called the hub of the web where they stay in just the center part right here. Um, another type of spider we see is the grass spiders and they make the funnel webs. Here's a grass spider right here and you see these in your lawns in the morning. Um, if you go out and see all the dew on the grass, they, they make those funnels to you know, not just to attract prey, but the prey can kind of get stuck in that. It funnels, you know, funnels the prey down into where the spider is. And that's another really unique way that this spider catches its prey. Yeah, morning is a really good time to go out looking for these webs because in the evening, that's when the spider, spiders take down their webs and then rebuild. So the orb weavers, that's when you would really want to go look. And he also suggests walking towards the sun so it kind of reflects behind the web. Yeah, so really it's really visible. This is the last spider we'll talk about. It's the marbled orb weaver. Um, there's so many different species of spiders in Minnesota. They all have kind of cool patterns. If you can get over kind of how creepy they look, um, they're pretty and they're, you know, very interesting part of the ecosystem. Here's one that is eating a Japanese beetle, so they're important predators in our landscapes. Um, sometimes, you know, we'll find a bumblebee or a dragonfly in the web, and that's kind of sad for us, but it's nowhere near the damage we as humans do on insect populations, so you can't really be mad at spiders for doing just what they do. They catch a lot of flies and mosquitoes. I just recommend everyone get this book. I thought it had some really awesome pictures in the back too. It goes into a lot of detail about how spiders make their webs, um, a lot of detail about their um, biology, how they make the webs. And um, I just thought it was a really interesting book. I really like having it around. It's a great reference book and I encourage everyone to go out and try to look for spider webs. Um, next month, we will be reviewing Doug Tommy's new book, Nature's Best Hope. So I hope you guys tune in for that one as well. Thanks so much and have a great Thanksgiving. Stay healthy, everybody. Have a thanks great Thanksgiving. <laughs> Bye.